Where the U.S. is looking for allies to stop high-technology exports to China, there is a large market of consumers in China that U.S. companies cannot simply overlook. NVIDIA The American chipmaker introduced a new variant of semiconductor technology for its Chinese customers. On the other hand, to get around recently enacted U.S. penalties on semiconductor exports to China. Some Chinese fabulous chipmakers are changing their high-tech chip designs to slow down processing speeds. Let's dive into the details and see why giants like Alibaba are forced to shut down their processor speed. It's not the first time that U.S. export laws have attempted to curtail the growth of Chinese at companies. In 2019, Huawei's semiconductor division, Isilicon, violated a previous set of export regulations. Due to the allegedly discovered backdoors in Huawei's communications equipment, the company initially faced sanctions. Huawei is no longer able to access software and hardware produced by firms like Intel, Google, and Qualcomm as a result of these regulations. Despite this, Huawei persisted with its own processors and applications, with Chinese consumers supporting the company's sales as its overseas business struggled. The same thing is happening now and Chinese businesses are looking to find solutions. To slow down processing times and get over U.S. restrictions meant to limit Chinese computer power, Alibaba and the startup Byron Technology are making adjustments to their most cutting-edge chip designs. The designs for the cutting-edge processors that will power China's upcoming generation of supercomputers, artificial intelligence algorithms, and data centers have taken years and millions of dollars from Alibaba, Byron, and other Chinese design companies. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, the largest contract chip manufacturer in the world, manufactures these overseas. Their plans, however, have been derailed by restrictions that Washington enacted last month and that limit the processing capacity of any semiconductor imported into China without a permit. In order to manufacture semiconductors, practically all advanced chip makers including TSMC, depend on U.S. technology or equipment. As a result, Washington's new trade restrictions also apply to third-country chipmakers in those industries. Additionally, it will be a while before China's local chip factories are able to produce the Byron. Both Alibaba and Byron were testing their newest chips at TSMC when the sanctions were announced. This is a significant setback for Alibaba. Since the Chinese government postponed the IPO of its subsidiary Ant Group two years ago, its shares have lost 80% of their value. The graphics chip it was manufacturing was the company's first graphics processor. Furthermore, its release date was approaching. Their ambitions were shattered by U.S. export prohibitions on goods coming from other nations to China. As a result, businesses have ceased production of current chips and made numerous design adjustments. According to a Byron engineer, the company is attempting to change its designs to reduce processing speeds in the hopes that TSMC will still be able to produce them. Before the U.S. implemented sanctions, archived versions of Byron's website revealed specifications for the BR100, the company's first processor, which would have exceeded the U.S. restrictions with a transfer rate of 640 gigabytes per second. The BR100 now has slower specifications listed on Byron's website at 576 gigabytes per second. The first person to notice Byron's change in specifications was the head analyst at semiconductor research firm Semi Analysis, Dylan Patel. He said that Byron was trying to slow down its processors by turning off a portion of the chip. On the other hand, Alibaba's semiconductor division is experimenting with ways to improve its new ad processor that was created using TSMC's 5M technology. New modifications would necessitate T-Head paying for a second production test run at TSMC, which would cause a months-long delay and cost up to 10 million US dollars. Engineers have argued that the US regulations lack clarity because there are several ways to determine the bidirectional transmission rate. Nevertheless, they are already striving to lower processing speeds in order to comply with the laws. Some businesses have made press releases available to the public for chips whose transfer rates exceed the law, notifying authorities to keep an eye on shipments of these components. Engineers have a better chance of working with the fab to identify a redesign that could get around the rules in situations when a chip's capabilities aren't yet well recognized. Furthermore,
Furthermore, the U.S. government has previously imposed restrictions on NVIDIA and AMD exports to China. The American semiconductor design, major NVIDIA, announced a replacement with a slower processing speed for its second-largest market two months after the United States blocked China's access to two of its high-end microchips. The NVIDIA, a 800 graphics processing unit, is another alternative offering to the NVIDIA, a 100 GPU for clients in China. The A100 processor is well-recognized for powering supercomputers, artificial intelligence, and high-performance data centers for businesses ranging from biotech and finance to manufacturing. The cloud computing division of Alibaba has used its services. Chinese businesses, however, are the ones suffering the most. Thanks to significant support from the federal government and venture capitalists, China's semiconductor design industry will soon catch up to U.S. competitors. Byron is one of those groups, sometimes known as fabulous semiconductor companies, that is among the best and most outspoken. The company has raised more than room 5 bin, $695 million, from investors, including Sequoia Capital China, Kaiming Venture Partners, Chinese and Russian state funds, to develop a processor it claims surpasses competing GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD. On the other hand, the U.S. intention to compel Japan and the Netherlands to join it in blocking the flow of cutting-edge semiconductor technology to China was criticized by Zhao Lijin, a spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry. He further stated that the world is aware of what the U.S. is doing, so this is not how a major country would behave if it were transparent and honest. He also urged all parties involved to take an impartial approach, consider their long-term goals, as well as the core concerns of the international community, and reach the proper independent decisions. With that being said, we come to the end of the video. Will the U.S. succeed in halting Chinese computer technology advancements? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. To keep up to date about what's happening around in different countries, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated about our latest content.